Hello, everybody. It's me, Omikuro, Remy, again. <laughs> and it's taken a while because I've been super busy with some other projects, which I'm actually going to upload onto YouTube, but I finally got around to making this motorized elevator lift that was only a prototype in the last video. So what happened was that I actually built, finished building the frame. I, would, I said in my design that I would... Um, replicate the elevator lift. If you haven't seen my previous elevator prototype video, by the way, you should go check that out. But I said in my previous thing that um, you could replicate the lift multiple times. So I actually built the frame where the lift is replicated so that it, the distance change is multiplied. And then while I was gone, my awesome teammates actually was managed to mount it onto a test chassis and motorize it. Now this uses two high torque motors, which is incredible. Very low need for uh, motors. I know people are asking about that. But you'll see um, there is a low need for, there are, there are only two motors. You can see in the picture. Um, it uses chain wrapped in between bars. And as you pull the chain using the motors, uh, you're pulling the metal bars closer together, therefore making the elevator lift and lifting. Now, you may be saying, oh, this breaks 18 inches, because it actually does. But that's only because I haven't actually cut the metal down. So I need to do that. So that's something on my list of things to do. It's just that since this is a prototype, I didn't want to cut any metal yet. Also, this, this still uses sliders. People are saying that those might be too heavy and I should make custom sliders. But really, they're not that heavy. And as you can see, the, the two motors are actually able to manage it pretty well. So uh, why don't I stop talking and I show you the video? So, that is my finished lift prototype. You just saw it run. Um, I'm going to lay down some facts now, show some drawings, ex drawings, explain in more detail how it works. So yeah, as you can see, it uses two high torque motors. And I timed it. It takes four seconds for this lift to reach full capacity, which is pretty good. However, what I'm trying to really achieve with my robot this year is to nuke a post. Basically, if you have a post, what I want to do is that I want to grab three or four of these cubes raise them very quickly and immediately just shove them off and they all go in and then have a very rapid process of putting in a bunch of cubes um, and taking one pull instead of uh, trying to dominate as many pulls as possible with one cube. So seeing how this is my basic design um, idea, what I think I'm going to go for next is trying to speed up the lift. So, let's look at ways to speed up the lift. Now, my objectives and issues are, firstly, I want to keep these two. I'm going to circle these in red. I really want to keep these two high torque motors, right? So, by, I, want, I, want to, I want to have a two motor lift, and I want it to be faster and sturdier. What do I mean by sturdier? Well, the people in the comments were actually right in that the chain, I'm going to point that out, different color. This chain right here, the one that's powering the lift, actually snaps quite easily. And I can think of a couple ways to fix that right off the bat. And I'll continue to think up of um, some ideas. And I'll explain them to you. And so, I want to keep the high torque motors but have it move even faster. And I also want some way to make it sturdier by not having the chain snap so often. So, there's two things I can do about the chain. Firstly, the chain right now is only on one side of the um, arms that are lifting, these bars right here, right? So if these are my bars, there's another one, here's another one. I've only got chain on one side of them, right? If I can make this symmetrical and have chain on the other side, then that's two times the amount of chain able to, that is able to deal um, with the lifting less strain on each piece of chain, you have the strain, and therefore, there's less of a chance, yeah, there's less of a, there's less of a chance that um, you're going to have the thing not work, which is good. Now, the other thing that I was thinking of, and I actually saw somebody else that was prototyping an elevator lift, they're not using chain and gears. 
they're actually using pulleys and rope. So if I just uh, get rid of that. So imagine, you see how, where, how this chain sort of like goes up and down and up and down. Instead of having chain, imagine you had a pulley here, right? And then a pulley here and dot, 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 dot. And then you had rope, right? And I'll, I'll make rope white, uh, gray. So it would be the same sort of deal, right? You're whatever, right? You're going like this and then like this, and then, right? Um, so rope doesn't snap as easily, and I don't think the friction increases too much more. So that's actually something that we're going to try out. We're going to try replacing chain, high strength chain, with, uh, sp with high strength chalk sprockets. We might switch it out for pulleys and rope. Um, now, another thing that we're going to try to do, and this will hopefully help strengthen the robot lift as well as make it speedier, is a lot of times what teams would do in last year's competition is that um, they'd put rubber bands. Now, imagine if I put rubber bands between here and here, here and here, between the top of one bar and the bottom of the next bar, and I just keep going down, right, and I do all of these. Then... When this arm is down, those rubber bands want to push it up. It requires less uh, torque, less power, to lift these arms up because you've got these rubber bands fighting gravity. Now, this should hopefully make it speedier, but because the motors don't have to fight as much gravity, the, the rubber band is helping with that battle. And then also strengthen it because the rubber band, because the chain doesn't have to pull as much, the rubber band is also pulling. Basically, you're adding in another factor of lifting that should hopefully take strain um, off of the motor and chain system. Finally, you may notice that this elevator lift is actually quite a bit wobbly, which leads to my last idea for how to improve this. Although, definitely, please leave some ideas in the comments. But basically, what I want to do is have some sort of bar that can extend, and I'm going through my friend's face right now, and then have a slider on the bottom. And now, this doesn't have to be as high. It might connect here. It might connect here. I don't really know. But basically, if you have a slide, if that top bar is the slider, this one, or this one, or this one, then what you can do is that as this elevator lift increases, then the bar can slide in and out and up and down. And therefore, there should, or well, no, this won't, the bar wouldn't slide in and out, excuse me. The bar wouldn't slide in and out, it would just slide up and down, and it would pivot, meaning that this uh, top bar wouldn't be able to fall, to lean backwards, because there's a triangle supporting it. So basically, I'm building an adjustable support for the elevator lift as it uh, lifts. So, if you guys have any questions and comments, I would love to hear them. Any ways to help improve the lift, any critiques of the design, uh, explanations as to why something else might be better, like a scissor lift, a reverse four bar, which I am getting to, yes, it's just that somebody else on my team has already built a reverse four bar, so I'm kind of dealing with needing parts for that. I might just record his, I don't know. Um, but please, definitely leave questions and comments. I think that the next thing I'm going to do is maybe record a reverse four bar or a scissor lift, or actually record what my intake is going to be and what my outtake is going to be, because I haven't actually seen anything like it on YouTube. I think it's pretty unique, and I think you guys would like it. So please like, favorite, and subscribe, and goodbye.